Hey everybody, how's it going? Well, it looks like I'm finally going to be able to catch the rail gang putting in this ribbon rail. You'll remember uh, the video I did of the ribbon rail train laying this rail out. I'm at Woodford. I'm standing in the same spot where I shot uh, most of that video. And uh, you can see behind me, they're building a panel with concrete ties. This is going to go in at uh, this end of the uh, short siding or house track or as I always say, whatever the heck they call it now. And uh, Woodford Spur, who knows? What difference does it make? Um, they're also building a panel down at West Woodford. I don't know when they plan on putting these in, but it looks like it will be part of this project. But anyway, the uh, rail gang is stretched out uh, back here behind me a little ways. They haven't got here yet. I want to stay a, kind of ahead of them so I can catch all of it. And uh, behind me, you'll see if they have a curve they're going to lay through. I have a lot of people ask me about the uh, flexibility of rail. And uh, sometimes uh, people, just, they don't understand that rail is extremely flexible, even in short sections. I will have to say this. I never worked around a rail gang that was laying on concrete ties. I was uh, not involved in any of that when they installed all of this back in the late 90s. And, uh, I'm not conversant with all of the machinery that they use to do it. I know some things are they're done a little differently, but uh, I think we can figure this out as we go along. All right, well, let's watch the rail gang work through Woodford. They have started, this is where they're gonna start today. They've already laid the rail on this side. They've already pulled the rail out on the other side and they're moving forward. Those machines up there, they're just the ones that go up, they pull the clips off. That speed swing right there, with the guy just closed the door there. Those go along and pull the rail, the old rail out. Move it aside. That looks like maybe a cribber cleans out the space between the ties. And I'm not sure what that tracked vehicle there does. There's a guy in it with a hook. I think it has something to do. These gentlemen here are setting the plates. You'll remember the video I shot of the work train laying out the uh, those plates and the clips ahead of this project. They uh, set those on and uh and i honestly don't know what that machine there does this crane here they will hook up to the rail here and start moving it into place now i don't know if they'll make it up into the curve uh, where we were a minute ago it is up there about a quarter of a mile this particular piece of rail here ends at the uh, switch up there where, that we were standing above. And I don't know if that's all they're going to do today, but uh, I'm going to be here all day, so we'll certainly find out. Okay, now you can see that they're, they've got that uh, sliding... Uh, hook or whatever it's called, or I don't know, on the rail, they will and they will prepare this area right here for a weld see the grinding on this rail, how they ground that on both sides. I have not been up here while they're welding these, so this may be uh, one of the electric types of welds where they don't use the big thermite uh, powder to, uh, manganese type welds. I don't know. We'll find out. But it looks like they may be grinding that for good conductivity from one rail to the next. 
You see him removing the uh, little protective device there. That's to keep sparks. You can see they've moved it to the other end. The sparks are being thrown away from the grinder and they have to have those uh, little uh, covers to keep the sparks from going past the work area. It's a fire safety thing. And uh, that is, uh, I call it a cribber, that's not really the proper term for that, but you see it's a broom that cleans uh, the ballast, the rocks, off of the area where they're getting ready to lay rail. See the gentleman following along behind it with a blower, getting all the dirt and dust out of the way behind it. And they're getting ready to start moving the machines forward again. Okay, now I can see what it's doing under there. It looks like it is some sort of a roller that is putting, I don't know if it's a lubricant or an adhesive. I'm not sure exactly what it's putting on top of the, on top of the tie plates. I should say on top of the ties, they'll stick, they'll put the plates on there. I'm assuming it's an adhesive. If you know, drop in the comments below. All right, see he is laying in the rail now. And you can see those machines up there pulling the rail out. Well, jumped up here to the front of the pack a little bit. You can see that they've got the rail out up to that point. You can also see that they are working towards the end of that piece of rail. I thought this was one continuous piece up to the switch, but I was mistaken about that. You can see the machine behind this one has a magnet and he is picking up all the scrap, the, the clips, anything that's uh, fouling the ties where they're going to lay the rail and he will pile that up there is uh, one of the piles that they made from when they did the other rail The clips have been pulled on the outside of the rail and they're setting the plates out where they're going to be needed. All right, let's head back up to the weld. You see they have the hydraulic mechanism there. Those are the pullers or the pushers, whatever they need to do. To get the distance, you can see the rail moving. They got it, they pulled that together where it needs to be. And we'll set out their fire protection equipment. This gentleman wetting down the 
vegetation along the tracks here. About two weeks ago, this was green. I always tell people we go from wet season to fire season in about two weeks. See this gentleman here, has, he controls the machinery. Got a guy down there with a level. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be, all lined up properly. And you just put that piece of steel on there that I don't know if it's a perhaps a kind of a stand that stabilizes the welder where it's supposed to be I know nothing about this process I'm gonna make it top secret Parking sparks down below. Okay, well, I was mistaken again. As I often am. It looks like this is just a short piece of rail here that they're welding in. And he is actually setting the next piece of rail in. And they will prepare that for a weld when they're done here. took about uh, two minutes or so all told as far as the actual welding procedure which is in itself is not much faster than the thermite type but the setup was much faster it takes a long time to set up a thermite you have to heat the rail preheat it you have to do a lot of stuff with the thermite type so this is definitely time saving and labor saving now they will grind everything flush and that's another thing with the thermite type it leaves a pretty big mess around the outside that has to be uh, back in the old days they used a handheld chi uh, a handle chisel and a uh, sledgehammer to knock all that stuff off they use a hydraulic press type thing to knock all that uh, leftovers from a thermite type and then they have to grind it this doesn't leave that kind of a mess, so as soon as they're done, they can just grind everything flush, make it look pretty, and move on to the next weld. There is the weld. Not for the grinding march, you'd almost not know that these guys had ever even been here. All right, let's get back up to the front. I'd like to get them laying through that curve, but it's not all that important, really. I think uh, made a pretty good point of how flexible rail is when they need it to be. And uh, as far as getting it to lay through curves, they just set it on the ties and the, there is a groove between the clip holders on concrete ties. They just lay the rail in that and just lay it into a curve. There's no real trick to it. Back, uh, uh, so I should say back in the old days on wooden ties, they put the, they have the metal tie plates laid down and they just set it in the groove on those. Those, uh, they spike them into place. And uh, lay it through the curve. There's really no trick to it. See there, when I did the little opening, our little intro, that is the turnout they're building and they will lay this in here I don't know if I'll be able to catch that uh, I'll try to find out when they're gonna do that and see I've got some trips planned coming up I got a lot of things going on 
These guys are very experienced with their speed. That's called a speed swing. They don't need guys to get out and hook the rail up. They just drop it down on top of it. It opens, opens itself up and clamps onto the rail as soon as they put pressure on it. And they're very good at this. See him using the rail to move the eye bond he was hauling, drop the butt of the rail down and hit it against the ties, to, or against the rail or the ties, to get it pointed the direction he wants it to point. Again, very experienced with these machines. These guys are really good. They work quickly. Yep, that's what they were doing. They were cutting that piece of rail. Move that out of the way, or have moved it out of the way. One of the things about this piece of machinery that you saw a while ago, putting the, it has to be an adhesive down for the tie plates, is you can see there's a guide on the rail there. And that ensures that he is always in the right place and doesn't drift offline, so his adhesives don't go on the wrong part of the tie. But as these machines complete their assigned task, in the case of this one, they will set it off the track. The rest of them are all on track vehicles, other than the speed swings themselves. And as they complete their tasks, they will move these out of the way as those machines up there are. And they'll go up there and park behind them. They set their cones out and wait for everyone to catch up. And here they come laying the rail in place. It doesn't take them very long to do that. Especially on a tangent track like this, straight track, can move right along. Again, these guys very experienced, very good at what they do. I'd hoped to shoot it from above into the curve, but this is the fourth day that I've come up to try and catch these guys, and they've always been in a uh, sections that I would not be able to get this close to show you how these things work and I'm kind of glad it worked out that way because every other day it was cold and windy yesterday I was up here it was 35 degrees it was cloudy it was windy it was getting breezy when I left and uh, today it's beautiful it probably feels like it's in the mid 60s and it's calm feels really good Big difference from the days of the doing this by hand, the Gandhi dancers moving 38 foot sections of rail with about 10 guys with handheld tie tongs. Now has that piece of rail in place. see that they have another uh, short piece of rail there in between the track that will be they'll have to set that in and then cut the uh, eye bond in I don't know if they're gonna set that right now or not I guess we'll see Got the magnet moving on down and you can see that the rail is laid in there on the 
That's the new rail there. And I don't know what they're waiting for right now. No, it looks like they're moving along. So we'll wait till they get here. Looks like reference marks, perhaps. I guess making sure that the rail isn't moving. S T A I two R T A T. I don't know. If you know, drop the comments below. We'd be interested in knowing. This machine here is the rail heater. And it goes ahead of the machines that clip the rail into place and firm it up. As the uh, weather warms up, rail will expand. If it cools off, it will contract. So when they lay rail, they try to get what is uh, called a neutral temperature. And this machine helps achieve that. It minimizes longitudinal movement of the rail, which helps, obviously, if a rail contracts, it could break. If it expands, it can cause what's called a sun kink, and neither of those situations is preferable. The way this works is, see it's got the, pro, the propane tank on it, and these ones on this rail, we obviously don't need those ones, but you can see all the piping going down there to the, uh, I don't even know what they're called, but that's where the flames come out, down at the bottom. If this was the rail that they were doing, those would be down alongside the rail can't see it obviously because it's on the other rail but anyway those are the heaters we're just watching these guys after the heater went by the reference marks that they made had moved a little bit I guess that's where they need them to be and before the uh, installator actually clips the rail into place they have to make sure that everything is where it needs to be and this is the machine that uh, installs the clips on the rail if they were working on this rail there'd be operators sitting in the uh, two seats here but you can see Over on the other side there, you can see that guy working. And they have to I heard a train horn, but <clears throat> so I'm not sure if that's what they're. There's a train coming through here. Yep, definitely a train coming. started to blow so it's cooling off a little bit but it's still pretty nice and they are I'm 
sure installing that short piece of rail up there with the I bond in it up there. As you can see, the clips are now installed. Would like to have caught this when it was on the other rail, but I couldn't make that happen, sorry. I made a little uh, dead cat cover for my speaker into my phone. I hope it's working. I tested it out the other day and it seemed to be lots of lumber as usual. But uh, I guess we'll see. Waste management. I'm not sure what's in those containers. Some kind of waste, I guess. If you know, drop the comments below. A little hydrochloric acid for you. Brighten up your day. The Woodford Depot used to sit right there where those piles of stuff are, parallel to the tracks. And then in that clearing there is where the signal and maintenance of way shops were here at Woodford. Got a, I have a picture I'll drop in here of the uh, Woodford Depot. But I have no photographs of the maintenance away facilities that were here. It looks like this guy just has extra clips in case some didn't get put on correctly by the ins in installator up there. Or they missed a tie or something and they have these, this group following behind them, making sure everything is hunky-dory. You can see that he has extra clips arranged around the rear of the, uh, his little cart there. I guess if they need them, they just grab them. It looks like perhaps that clip was not properly installed. And I, I don't know what would cause that. Maybe getting proper alignment, he's got to chisel out. Maybe the grooves that the uh, clips fit into are improperly spaced or something. It could be a problem with that. He's obviously making an adjustment. size tool that you saw him clamp over the top of the rail they can actually that is what they use to 
install the clip with. But they could put that over the top of the road. Looks like they were using it to move the rail around a little bit while he made his adjustment. Now we got to see what that group of workers are following the gang for. And uh, Taylor and Charlie here, the last piece of equipment in the group. That looks like a welding truck. And I don't know, I, I suppose if uh, this group were to find an issue that couldn't be fixed with the tools they have, I don't know, maybe he would uh, get out the torch and cut off a clip. Use that to build up or take down one of the uh, grooves the clips fit into on the tie. I really don't know. But if you do, as usual, let me know in the comments below. All right, well, we will cruise back up to that end and see if they have got that I bond put in or what's going on up there. And back up here, they are indeed welding that I bond in, as you can see. We're going to follow the whole thing. We saw that up above. And if you look way up there, that is the loop. That's the Union Pacific train that just went by here at Woodford. Heading around the top. You can see the machinery lining up down there. And they will get all their on-track equipment up there ahead of the switch. And when they're done, they will pull in here and park their equipment in the spur slash house track slash short siding but it's not siding anymore so i need to quit saying that that was just what it was at one time and i got stuck it with that in my brain it doesn't have a switch at the other end so it's not a short siding anymore and this is the old rail and you can look at it and you can see how worn it is and you can go back to my piece uh, in the how things work on the railroad about why they use grinding trains and the different uh, ways rail wear. All right, uh, when I did my piece on uh, signs, you can go back and how things work on the railroad. Look at that video about the uh, what different signs mean. I didn't cover this because this isn't technically a sign this is a temporary flag and uh, the rail gang is working a, their last piece of equipment is about a half mile up the tracks here and uh, this flag will tell anyone a uh, track inspector and a high railer another work group uh, anyone that there is track and time here and there is a this designates this as the end of a work zone and beyond here, you cannot pass this flag, this temporary flag, without contacting the EIC. Under any circumstances, you can't pass this flag without contacting the EIC. And you can see it's just a PVC tube that just, the end of it just slides over the rail, clips on there. And uh, that red flag rolls up and slides into the PVC tube. And there's a little cap that goes over it. We always took those off because they were really hard to get off sometimes, when it, especially when it got cold. But uh, anyway, that is a red flag denoting this as a work zone where someone has tracking time. All right, well, that will conclude my piece on the rail gang. Uh, I'm glad I got to share the uh, ribbon rail train laying out the rail, and now the gang installing the rail. Hopefully, I will be able to catch the gang that is going to scrap the rail. Uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, as I mentioned earlier also, I will get to catch them installing at least one of these uh, switch layouts with concrete ties. Again, we'll see. But anyway, keep shooting me the ideas. Drop them in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorport 59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and we will see you all later.